In this video, we're going to go over two ways to send text messages through your voice agent, or in this case, through Bland, without having to pay for enterprise. Now we're going to use four different platforms to actually get this working. The first one is obviously Bland. The second one is actually going to be Make. Third one is going to be Twilio. And last but not least is going to be ChatGBT, or in this case, OpenAI. Hey, I need pool access to Villa Sunset. I think I can help you with that. I've actually just sent you a video that should be able to help with accessing the pool at Villa Sunset. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you've already used Blend before, but if you haven't, or if you've never used conversational pathways, here's an easy breakdown of what that is. Now we're going to use four different platforms to actually get this working. The first one is obviously Blend, which is the sort of the engine that actually hosts the entire voice calling system. The second one is actually going to be Make, which is where the text messages are actually stored and what actually sends them out. Third one is going to be Twilio, which is how we actually get the phone numbers to be able to send text messages. And last but not least is going to be ChatGBT, or in this case, OpenAI, to do a bit of processing in the background before we actually send those text messages out. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you've already used Blend before, but if you haven't, or if you've never used conversational pathways, here's an easy breakdown of what that is. So whenever you're building voice agents, there are usually two ways to do them. You can either have a single shot prompt, which is just a big list of instructions. One of the reasons why we like Blend so much is for complex use cases, it's really powerful to be able to fractionalize those prompts. So instead of having one big list of instructions, you give it a bunch of smaller list of instructions. Each of these nodes that you're looking at on screen is a small, tiny little prompt that makes up the entire voice agents. One of the biggest benefits of this is the ability to contain prompts to make sure that if you have specific points that have to be hit before moving on, they will never be skipped. Now, there's a lot of benefits of using something like conversational pathways, specifically when your conversation is very complex, meaning that if you're doing an outbound caller for ads per se, then it, this might not be the best fit. But let's say you're doing an insurance company or you're a booking company and you need people to go through a very rigorous and very structured step-by-step -step process in order to actually book in with you, something like Conversational Pathway makes sense because you can contain each individual prompt or each individual step as its own prompt and have and all of the intricacies and nuances can be accounted for individually. All right, without further ado, let's jump right in. On my screen right now, there's a blend agent and it contains both ways of doing the same thing. So on the left-hand side where my mouse is, is the simple yet somewhat limited version of this. All we're doing on this side of things is from the start node, we're asking the user, how can I help? Then from there, we're asking them to clarify which property they want help about. In this case, I'm using somebody calling in because they want some information about one of our four different properties. And then once they actually give or clarify what property they're asking about, we have four different nodes and each of these nodes is a webhook node. Now, a webhook node, if you're unfamiliar, is just a way for Bland to connect with different applications that are outside of Bland. In this case, we're using an automation software that you might be familiar with called Make. So each of these nodes is actually connected to a Make scenario right here. So for example, if I click on the villa called Sunset Villa, click on here, you'll see this address is the exact same as the webhook or the entry point for this make scenario. Now, the reason why we do it this way is for simplicity, meaning that if you have one templated text that you just want to send every time and you don't want to have to be worried about complexity or don't have to be worried about nuance, you can use something like this because every time this gets triggered, all we're doing within make is taking this trigger and taking the phone number that I actually called in and we're sending it over to Twilio. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Twilio, it's just a way to buy phone numbers. And a lot of the infrastructure is built off of Twilio. So that's how you make calls, etc. So if you don't have a Twilio account, all you got to do is just go to Twilio.com, sign up, and then buy a number. Now, here's a super important point. If you're doing this, you're going to need something called A2P compliance if you're in the US. It takes a couple of days to get it. But basically, the point of it is, is that back in 2023, the US passed some regulations to stop spammers from just cold um, texting people. So if you're using this for your business and you are and you're in the US and you don't already have A2P, just keep in mind that you will need it in order to send text messages to people that are calling in. If you're in, if you're in another place that doesn't require it, you can skip the step. But once you're in within Twilio, buy a number, doesn't really matter what the number is. And then if you go into manage, 
In order to make a connection to make.com, you can simply go into manage, or you can go into account dashboard. And then if you scroll down, you're going to see right here, this SID and this auth token. Whenever you're first using this Twilio module, when you create a new one, it's going to ask you to create a connection to it. It's going to ask you for those two credentials. Just take those, put them in there, and that'll take care of that. Once you've connected your Twilio account, you're going to choose a phone number to actually send from. I think they're about $1.15 per phone number. But regardless, all you've got to do is go back into Twilio, search for the number that you want. You can choose different area codes and then buy that number. And then if you refresh your make screen, that number should then show up right here. The two number, we'll dive into this in a second on bland. You can leave this blank for now. Message body should be create a body. And then the actual body, which is the text message that's actually going out. So just think about, hey, look, whenever somebody will receive this text message, and it'll always be the same, what should it say? In this case, it's just some placeholder text for all of the different amenities that this villa has. So the pool access, kitchen tours, entertainment system, and rooftop terrace. Now, where do we get this two number from? Well, we're getting it from the webhook. Where's the webhook getting it from? Bland. Now, this is the part, the triggiest part, where I see a lot of people um, have trouble creating webhooks within Bland. So here's how we do it. To create a new webhook, all you gotta do is add a new node, and then you can choose what type of node you want. In this case, you can always just choose a webhook node. And then within said webhook node, let me delete this. And then within your webhook node, if for this particular, particular example, we don't need to extract any call info because remember, the webhook URL or the address is always going to be the same whenever somebody comes here or it's going to be for the same purpose. So we don't need to extract any dynamic variables. Within the webhook, you post the address from make. Now to get this, you can just go into the make scenario whenever you create a new webhook. If you, aren't, if you don't see, by the way, this bubble, all you got to do is press add a module, then search up webhook and that'll, that'll show up. Then you can just add a new webhook, which will give you a new URL. In this case, let me just create one. You copy this, put it back into Bland, and just put it here. Then you don't have to touch headers. Body is the most important part. So Bland had these built-in variables that are always active. So in this case, all you've got to do where it says number, or all you've got to do is just really open curly brackets, and this is a, a JSON block number and then short two. Now this, because this is a number, you don't actually have to put it between two curly braces. If this was a word then you might have to, but in this case, it doesn't matter. You can just leave it as is and always put as short underscore two. Or if you want to have the area code into it, you can also just put two curly braces, two curly braces and two, it'll have the same effect or same impact. But I'm assuming you're in the US or in Canada, in which case this should work just fine. Then the timeout seconds, you can leave this as 10, reroute to server, just leave this on. And then all you gotta do after that is choose what pathway you want it to go to after the API request. So in this case, we're just going to the wait node. And then where it says send speech, you can just choose what do you want the agent to say while that text is being sent. In this case, all we've said is inform the user that you actually just sent them a video that should be able to help with that. And that's pretty much it. There's not a lot going on, but that's sort of the purpose. Now, the reason why this is so simple is because the separation of what text is sent at is actually done at the bland level. When we've clarified what property they want information at, each of these nodes is a separate scenario within make. So for example, for Sunset Villa, I've got this. But if you look here, for Sealoft, I've got another one. And each of them are exactly the same. The only thing that's different is the webhook address because they have different URLs and also the Twilio message that actually goes out. Each one of them is different. So you can basically pick where do you want the complexity to be? If you want it to be complex on bland side of things, then you can have it like this where make doesn't have to do any of the heavy lifting or moving on to the second version or second way of doing this, which in my opinion is a lot more robust is using make as the engine to actually power what text message to send. Here's how to do that. So if you're looking on the right side of my screen, what you'll see is this little yellow node. This is called a global node from Bland. And what that basically means is that this node or this card is available throughout the agent. So regardless where I am in the conversation, this yellow thing means that I can, this can be accessed whether I'm at the beginning of the phone, as soon as the phone rang or 
all the way at the end. That's all that means. And we basically prompted it to only be triggered whenever the user has a question about one of these properties and their amenities. So if you see right here, it says you can only trade this pathway when the user searches for one of the following properties or their associated amenities. Do not trade this pathway for any other queries, which means that this will only be triggered if somebody asks about pool access, sunset villa, kitchen tour, et cetera, et cetera. On the actual initial node, whenever this is triggered, what we're asking people is to clarify what property and amenity they need help with. And there's a really useful tool within Blender called a loop condition. What that basically means is you can force it to not move on until you have clarified exactly what property and amenity they need. What I mean by that is somebody calls in and says, hey, I need help with the pool. Well, the robot will tell it back. Well, that's great, but I just need to know what exact, what exact property are you referring to so that we can help you. And it won't move on until it has answer to this. Once it has both the property and the amenity that the user is looking for, we can then move on to step two. So in step two, here's where things get a bit more, let's say, in depth for bland. So whereas here it says extract call info into variables, on the, in the first way of doing it, we don't actually need this. But for this specific example, we actually need to extract the variables from bland and then send them to make so that it can then figure out, okay, what video do I send to this individual? So in this case, if you look at my webhook, I've got three different URLs or three different variables that I need to send over. We have the number, which doesn't change. We have the actual property itself, as well as the issue. Well, how do we, how do we place these variables before this gets sent out? Blend has a feature right here called call extract, extract call info into variables. Now this runs before the webhook goes out, which means that whatever I put here, in this case, I'm gonna add two variables. One of them being is gonna be called property. And the, the, the description of this property will be the property that the user is calling about. That's variable number one. Now variable number two, and by the way, make sure that this matches with whatever you're sending here. Or sorry, whatever you're, this needs to match this. Because these curly brackets, what they mean is that every time that this conversation starts or you run this, this will be dynamically filled in before the call goes out. Now on the other side, we have issue. And this is basically what I was the amenity or why is this user calling? Why is this person calling? Issue. The user is facing. Cool. Then all I've got to do after that, same thing where you put in the post request or the post URL, this URL you get from make itself. And then I've got to do press save. You can add obviously a pathway, send a speech during the notebook. This part is very similar to what we just did. Well, once you've saved that, published it. Now what's going to happen is once I, if I just run this webhook on its own and then I have bland call me, Hey, I need pool access to Villa Sunset. Just to confirm, you're looking for pool access at Villa Sunset, is that correct? Yeah, I'm locked out. I think I can help you with that. I've actually just sent you a video that should be able to help with accessing the pool at Villa Sunset. I'm going to need to verify some information to assist you with... Cool. Now, obviously, you can keep talking, but what I'm trying to show is that we have now received three variables from Bland. Obviously, the number that we called, property as well as pool access. Now, what are we doing with this? Well, the next step right after that is we're actually using ChatGBT. In this case, I believe it's GBT40 mini to take these three variables and then from its database of links and URLs, compile the URLs that are necessary to actually help the user. In this case, we basically prompted ChatGBT to do the following things. We've told it your task is to provide appropriate video links with information on various amenities and features depending on the property and the guest's request. Output the response in a clear manner with both the purpose of the video and the actual link. Now, these are obviously placeholder examples, but the reason this came about is we had a hotel company reach out to us and they were having the same questions over and over again about how do I get access to the heating? How do I get 
access to the hot tub or how do I control the hot tub, etc. And they had actually filmed a bunch of videos about all of this stuff to actually help out with it. But people weren't aware and they just wanted it responsive with the phone. They're not going to go through a gigantic library to try to figure out how to get access to specific things. So this was really healthy in between where they can still make that phone call, but we don't have our agents all down the phone just answering the same things over and over again while we've made videos specifically for this. And then it basically compiles whatever issue the user is having, formats it in a nice way, and then sends it over to Twilio. So if you're building this yourself, all you've got to do, basically put in your phone number. This, you don't even need it really for the specific step. The main thing that you're going to need is the property and you're going to want to fill it in with the property that you got from the webhook, the actual issue, which is the amenity or whatever they're having trouble with. And just tell GPT, hey, look, this is going to be sent directly as a text message. So don't give me a based on this information or here's how, like, just make it a text message. Then you take whatever GPT outputs. And by the way, if you haven't connected GPT to make before, all you're going to do, open a new module. open up OpenAI, and then you can do message assistant, or in this case, we're doing create a completion. If you haven't ever connected it, it's going to ask you for an API key. All you've got to do is go to openai.com, and then I believe it's slash usage, which will then allow you to find your API key. Okay, now that we've got GBT in it, and by the way, you can put, depending on what model you're using, but you can put a lot of links in here. I think we had probably around 30 or 40 different video links and it had, it had no problem as long as the property and the issue is clear it had no problem outputting the correct video link then all we're going to do very similar to the first one where we have a twilio module all we're doing is sending a text message to creating a body and then the actual body or what we're sending is whatever the gpt response came back with in this case you go to under results you can either do results or message content Done. And then, oh, by the way, this this thing right here, I believe it's still giving this, cause just because it's an old, um, it's an old prompt that it gave us. But if this is giving you trouble or it's not being formatted correctly, worst case scenario, you can always just use a smarter system. It'll cost a bit more, but depending on volume and speed that you need, for a mini should be just fine. But in most cases, if you just prompt it correctly, it will give you the uh, format that you need. After that. All we're doing is sending a text message based on what GPT just sent us. And then at the end right here, I just have a Twilio module that actually goes to the business owner. So for example, if you're doing this for yourself, well, you would send this to yourself just to sort of keep track of how, what issues people are facing, what video was sent, etc., etc. And then going back into Bland, once we've actually um, sent the webhook, we're waiting for a few seconds. And then we basically just asking the user, well, hey, did that help? If it does, great. Now, obviously you can sort of expand on these as needed. And if it didn't help, would we just have another node right here that's a transfer node? So if that video didn't help, but they didn't receive it or they can't receive it, for example, because if you'll scroll back up, we actually have a loop condition here. The reason that this is here is basically this will only move on once I've actually received it because sometimes GPT can take maybe a few seconds longer than anticipated to actually come up with a good answer. Or if the user for whatever reason says, hey, look, the number that I'm calling on either can't receive text messages, send it to a different number. For the use cases, obviously there are workarounds around it, for, but for the purposes of this video, all we're doing is just transferring it to a live agent who will then be able to help them. But that is two different ways of getting the same job done. One of them is more static, more robust because there is no AI involved. It's just what property do they need info on? Send it to them directly. The other one is a lot more in depth. It's a lot easier to change, but it does require a bit longer setup. Hope that makes sense. Hope it was valuable. Any questions, concerns, let me know. And let me know what else you want us to build. Thanks. If you don't know who I am, my name is Taha al and I've been building voice agents for the last year now. Been building chatbots for the last two years. And we've done so many different industries, some of which are actually on screen with them. Everything from education to construction, dentistry, real estate, lawyers, insurance brokers, etc. Mostly in service based businesses or local businesses. If you want to learn more about how we work, the types of companies we work with, or if you want us to build us your own voice agents, then you can always just go to promptadvisors.com slash inbound dash agent. That's probably the best way to reach us. Thank you for watching.